There are three buzzwords to uh, sum up the Canadian Grand Prix, I think. Lift and coast. Until now, I have defended the power unit slash engine regulations that were introduced in 2014. I felt that they are the right image for Formula One, embracing the uh, new situation that exists in the world about the lack of fuel being around needing to stretch mileage further and embracing hybrid technology. But when you have situations like we had in Montreal, uh, situations where you had uh, Lewis Hamilton's engineer saying, uh, okay, lift and coast 100 meters or something along those lines. What sort of message does that give? give? That's not really racing at all, is it? Now, considering the races that the circuit Gilles Villeneuve has brought out in the past, this was by no means a classic. The 2015 race will not go down in history as one of the all-time classic Canadian Grand Prix, I'm sorry to say. Uh, it's a delicate balancing act for all parties concerned. It's a classic case of be careful what you wish for. In 2010, Bridgestone were accused of having tyres that were too durable and it only made the Canadian race that year a classic or interesting, certainly, maybe classic is a bit um, extreme, but nonetheless interesting because the tyres were going off. And so we entered the fateful situation of having Pirelli take over from Bridgestone and as such produce tyres that deliberately go off, in intentionally hitting the cliff, as they call it. Now, I'm sorry, but maybe the situation has arisen now where we need to have tyres that the drivers can push on, but have a crucial cutoff point where the tyres do start to go off. So harder than the present day Pirelli tyres, but not so hard as the Bridgestone tyres from 2010, I believe. Is it any surprise then that a certain Nico Hulkenberg, whose management uh, actively made the step to Porsche Motorsport to ask him to do two races in the WEC, including the uh, Le Mans 24 hours? Because drivers in that series say that the tyres that they have, they can push on lap after lap after lap. And as the drivers in F1 have said, in F1 at the moment, the way the cars are, they're not even physically tested anymore. Mentally they're still tested because they think, okay, need to hybrid, need to harvest rather the MGUK, need to harvest the MGUH. Um, but the tyres are the limiting factor, like I've been saying. They don't push on or else the tyres are just gone like that. Not good. I'll still defend the uh, power unit situation though. F1 does still need to show that it's in tune with the rest of the world. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The noise, I believe, is not the main factor for the audience figures for F1 dwindling. It's more down to the lack of racing or apparent lack of racing. I've watched as many races as I possibly can and uh, it, the racing itself can be epic. Bahrain 2014 is a perfect example. That titanic duel between Rosberg and Hamilton. But as I said earlier, the Canadian Grand Prix this year was much more of an economy drive than it ought to have been. You know, having drivers lift and coast way before the corner, I believe they should outlaw lift and coast and make drivers save fuel the old fashioned way by short shifting, you know, 
instead of going all the way up to the maximum amount of revs allowed, which is 15, they cut it back to say 10, 9, 8,000 revs and uh, save fuel that way without compromising speed. And that's just the point. It's the speed of the cars that is the factor, certainly for me. That's what drew me to Formula One in the first place. Because I was like, wow, they're going so fast. You know, the noise was just a uh, side effect. That was what uh, attracted me to it. The speed, not the noise. So let's think very carefully before we condemn the current engine regs even further still. On the subject of the Le Mans 24 hours though, I wish every driver taking part in driving the 56 cars on the grid on Saturday the best of luck. I really do because honestly finishing that gr just finishing that grueling event is a victory in itself. Just coming first even if it's overall in LMP1 or first in the lowest category uh, Garage 99 or GTE AM it's a victory in itself. You know, imagine driving for three stints at a time. It must be really grueling.